Hey gang, welcome back to another one of my videos. In the past, I showed you how I made a very cool bicycle generator, which had an adjustable voltage output and the ability to power 120 volt power tools, as well as household appliances directly off the bicycle. I also showed you a very nice crank generator that I made using a permanent magnet DC motor that I found at a Goodwill store and I also showed you how to convert a microwave oven fan into a multi-phase crank generator. Now I understand that not every viewer is going to have the knowledge, skills, or tools required to make many of the things that I show on my channel, and that's why when I come across a product that I believe to be good quality, I have no problem showing it to my viewers. As a larger channel, I receive many offers by companies on a daily basis to show their products and as many of my viewers know the great majority of those offers are declined. I'm very picky as to what I show my viewers on my channel. What you're looking at right here is a very nice compact portable power supply unit made by Max Oak. The model's EB40. This not only has AC outputs but it also has multiple DC outputs as you can see right over here I'll give you a close-up in a minute you can charge all your USB devices you can also connect up an accessory socket like you would have in your vehicle hook it up right here this power unit can be charged three ways you can connect this up to your vehicle in the cigarette lighter or accessory socket and because your vehicle is not high enough in voltage even with the alternator running you'll be able to charge this about three quarters of the way up and you'll see it on the scale in the front, which I'll show you in a minute. There's a battery indication or state of charge indication. You can also charge this using a switch mode power supply that's included. You plug it in and the unit will fully charge up within seven hours. The last way that this could be charged is using a solar panel. This is a photovoltaic cable that's included. This is designed. It has a built-in charger, so you can supply up to a 125 watt solar panel the voltage between 14 and 40 volts and that will allow this unit to charge in four to six hours so you could place this unit inside your tent connect up the wire route it outside your tent to the solar panel and at night you have plenty of power and during the day it's charging keep in mind if you have a crank generator or a wind generator as long as the current does not exceed that 125 watt rating you will have no problem using it to charge this unit. Each one of these USB banks, there's a double, another double, and another double, can handle up to three and a half amps of current each. The Type-C connector right over here, included is this cable, will output around 18 watts. And if you want to use something with this accessory socket right here, it will be good up to about 10 amps of current flowing through this jack. Over here is another socket. It's 12 volts, 5 amps. Now there are other units sold on the market that look like this one right here. The only thing is, a lot of them have a modified sine wave output. And an inverter with a modified sine wave can power a lot of things. But if you're looking to supply power to sensitive electronics, you're going to want to use a power supply that has a sine wave output. And that's what this unit has right here. In a minute, I'm going to show you on my oscilloscope. Units that are very similar to this one, sold online, have batteries in them that are not Samsung batteries. This unit uses Samsung INR18650-29E lithium-ion batteries. This portable power unit will supply a maximum of 300 watts from this receptacle, and it has a surge rating up to 600 watts. Portable power units like you see here are ideal for people that go camping. This will supply your power needs while you're camping for a weekend. Also great to take with you on a boat. Place this inside the cabin. If you have a problem with the boat, your battery goes dead. At least you have this backup to power your cell phones as well as the electric out of the 120 volt receptacle. The unit is very well made, very comfortable to handle, and it has this built in tray on top. This is not designed to be left outside in direct sun, like most electronics. There is an LCD screen right here, which I'm going to power up in a second. Direct sun 
will damage that LCD screen as well as other electronics inside this portable power unit. This unit is not a rainproof unit, so you also want to make sure you place it inside your tent or inside the cabin of your boat when you're using the unit. You can also use this to jump start your vehicle. This would connect up, 10 gauge copper wire, and if you have a four cylinder or a six cylinder vehicle, jet ski, ATV, or a motorcycle, you'll have no problem at all jump starting it using this unit. The opposite side of the unit, as well as the voltage input charging jack from the solar panel, a look at the rear side. Here's a look at the bottom, rubber feet, and you can read the specifications right here. And on the front side, you see the 120 volt receptacles with the LCD display. To power up the unit, you push and hold this button right here. Right here is your battery charge indicator, 80%. Right over here is your input power. So if you connect this up to a solar panel, crank generator, or even a wind generator, you're going to see how much current is flowing into the unit right over here. Now under that it says DC off. Over here it says AC off. In order to turn on the DC power on the right side, you would push and hold. And you can see it says DC on. When everything's connected up, you're going to see the total wattage being drawn right there. Let's push and hold, turn it off. If you want to turn on the AC receptacles, push and hold AC on. And now it's active. 120 volts is now present at both of these receptacles. After about 10 or 15 seconds, this display will automatically dim. In order to have it come on again, you simply push the button once very quickly. All right, what I'd like to do now is take a look at the waveform on the Max Oak unit. For comparison, this is connected up to my electrical receptacle in my house. We're going to take a look at the waveform on the oscilloscope, and then I'm going to disconnect this and connect it to the Max Oak unit, turn on the power inverter, and see what the waveform looks like on the unit. The oscilloscope is set for AC times 10, and the probe is also adjusted for the times 10 setting. Let me power up the unit. And let me plug this in. Okay, you can see the waveform. It's a nice smooth sine wave. 122 volts, 100 volts per division, and 5 milliseconds per division. And I could adjust it right there. Alright, let me go over here. Let's take a look at voltage, peak. Okay, peak voltage, 163.8. And it should be double that for peak to peak. Let's try that. 327, 330. Okay, let's hook up the Max Oak power inverter and compare the waveform to the AC mains in my house. Okay, the scope is on. This is connected up. Let me turn on the power, push and hold. Over here is the state of charge on the internal batteries. And you can see the input wattage. And this says DC off, AC off. So let me just make sure that this stays nice and bright. Now we're going to turn on the AC, push and hold, and there you go. Take a look right over here, 112.4 volts, just like the output from the AC mains. Now what I want to do, click here, let's go voltage high. 163.8, very close to the AC mains of my house. And let's go peak to peak. 324.4. Now to demonstrate, I'm going to have all this connected up on the right, a game controller, LED flashlight, and my cell phone charging. And on that side, I'm going to be using that mini heat gun. So let me turn this on. Now I'm going to put the DC to on, and you can see that this lit up red, that's charging now, and my phone, yep, 
that's charging. Now I'm going to put the AC on. Let me turn on the heat gun. And you can see the wattage. Not only can this power the heat gun, but it can also power 50, 55 inch LCD or LED TVs. And you can also power up a blender as long as the wattage is not too high. Now I have a blender that's rated right around 350 watts, which is just above the limit of this unit. But as long as I don't place any ice in the blender, just a banana with some yogurt and some fruit juices, this unit will have no problem powering it up as you can see right over here. Now what I would like to do is connect up the AC power supply to charge this unit so you can see what it looks like as it charges and then after I do that I'm going to take this outside and connect it up to a solar panel. Okay, put the display back on. I'm going to plug it right on the side right over here. And you can see the panel again, what it looks like right over here. And you can see, just like a cell phone, it's now giving the indication that it's charging. And we have an input of around 80 watts. Turn that off. When a full charge has been reached, You'll see it right here on this LCD display. Okay, let's take this outside now and try connecting it up to the solar panel. Okay, I have my 12 watt solar panel connected up to the unit. It's not full, full sun, so it's gonna be outputting closer to nine or 10. And you can see it goes right over to the unit. Let me give you a close up over here to show you that it's charging. And right here, you can see the battery indicator cycling. And at the top right, you can see an input wattage of 9 watts. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.